<laughs> Good so, morning. Well, Wait, nope, I gotta do my intro first. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Nope. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. We are a webinar, a webcast, an online show, uh, whatever you want to call it. Um, the terminology um, is up for debate in some areas. Um, but whatever you want to call us, we are here um, online, live online every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Um, we do record the shows every week, however, so if you can't join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. Just um, check into our website for our recordings, and I'll show you at the end of today's show where all of those recordings are and where our upcoming shows are listed. Um, both the live show and um, the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So um, please do go ahead and share our website and our um, sessions with any of your colleagues, friends, neighbors, family, anybody whom you think might be interested in any of the topics we are um, have on the show. Um, the, we do a mixture of things here on Encompass Live, book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, um, demos of new services and products. Uh, our only criteria is that it is something library related. Um, all types of libraries, public, academic, special, um, anything out there. Um, yeah, that's and that, that's the only thing that you know, some of our topics might seem a little off the beaten path or out of the box here, and you might wonder what's up with that topic. But trust us, it'll always come around to libraries in the end. Um, it's either something libraries are actually doing, something they uh, may be of interest to libraries, um, services and programs available to them. Um, that is really our only focus here. Uh, we do sometimes have presenters who are. Uh, Nebraska Library Commission staff about things we're doing here in Nebraska, but we do bring in guest speakers, and um, that's what we have this morning. Um, on the line with us is Corey Seaman. Good morning, Corey. Good morning. Good morning. Wait. <laughs> um, and he's a director at um, the library at, at the University of Michigan. At the business school. The business school, specifically, yes. That's and um, <laughs> yeah, that many universities have like many different libraries, so you do have to specify, yes. Um, and Corey has a, a great presentation here. I know many people are doing things with um, digital image collections and online um, ways of just sharing all these pictures or any documents or things they have that online. And there's lots of things you can pay for, but there are some easy, free, or low-cost ways you can do this as well, and Corey's going to show us how you can do this um, using Flickr, which many of us has possibly used over the years. I know I do. I'm still, got, I'm still using it. Um, so I'll just hand over to you, Corey, to take it away and tell us all about it. Okay, thanks. Uh, and, and let me know, I'm, I'm trying to run two screens here, so let me know if it, if it comes off if something is weird, but hopefully you're seeing the presentation slides. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the yep. slides are available. Okay. At, um, at, at this URL, tinyurl.com, CS Flickr 2017. Um, so if you, if you want to look at some of the links that we explored this morning or look at uh, or get my contact information, it's all available. Um, what I want to do is actually just uh, hopefully move through this. Um, so insofar as an overview, I'm going to talk a little bit about Flickr first. Um, what are the benefits? And I love alliteration, so I came up with the seven Fs. Um, talking about your images, your rights, these are very important uh, issues. Uh, libraries uh, that are on Flickr and additional resources and readings. Um, I'm not really going to read anything to you, but um, I just want to make things available uh, that you'll be able to look at afterwards. Um, and because it is my brother's birthday, I thought I'd share a picture of us in about oh, many, many years ago in 1968. I'm the little one. My older brother is there, and he is, um, oh God, he is uh, 55 today, so. Happy Send birthday him to him then. <laughs> um, so just about Flickr. Uh, Flickr is a, um, it's an easy URL, F-L-I-C-K-R.com, uh, not to be confused with the common Flickr, the bird, which has an E in it. Um, it's still a subsidiary of Yahoo and um, they've been shopping it or Yahoo's been shopped around as have Flickr so um, I bring that up just because you know we you know we're living in a world with great consolidation 
Um, while it's very easy to say, I'm never going to fly in United Airlines again, especially after the week they've had, it's really hard not to because there's really, you know, there are fewer and fewer airline choices in the market. And the same is true in our digital service providers. Um, Flickr was an independent company founded in 2004 that was almost immediately purchased by Yahoo. Um, and it's historically been designed for photographers to help build a community of photographers. Um, there are a lot of other options out there, but this is the one that, that I'm very passionate about. And I think one that serves uh, our service as well. Um, we all know the other um, resources that are out there, Instagram, Photobucket, Shutterfly, uh, Imgur, uh, Smugbug, um, Picasa, which is now part of Google Photos. It's a constantly changing environment. And so it's, you know, as we're looking at things, this is uh, um, something to keep in mind. Instagram is hugely popular, especially among younger members of the community. Um, so, uh, you know, what's going to be popular in five years, 10 years, no one really knows. So one of the things that I really like is that, you know, you can actually set up and build collections in all areas. And so what I've done here, you can see some event photos that we've had. Um, I'm very big into donuts. So you can see in the middle of that's a Kunchki day. It's a big Detroit, Michigan holiday. It's Fat Tuesday. And we all celebrate with very, very um, heavy donuts. And so that's what seven dozen donuts look like. Um, we've done food drives. That's our staff. When we did a, a uh, volunteer project with some people from ProQuest and um, that was the construction or the D the, the renovation of our building and, and you can see some of the um, excess being sort of uh, wiped out um, one of the things that you can also do is you can use it for collections um, there's some personal and, and interesting things here uh, the helmet the Michigan helmet is from the Gerald Ford uh, Muse, uh, library on North Campus. Um, there's exhibits down in the lower left hand corner. Uh, my mother actually is on the picture on the boardwalk uh, with her older sister. And this is actually a passport from my Aunt Irma who left Germany in 1938. So um, she was living in a town just above, I guess the Rhine, but just above Switzerland. and. Um, she got out in 1938. My great grandmother got out in 1940, um, just before. And we saw the passports that came out in the 30s where there was no Nazi stamp there. Um, so they didn't go uh, sent off to the Holocaust centers as uh, Sean Spicer would have uh, articulated. Um, so insofar as uh, creating digital images, it's way easier now. Um, we can do it, everyone's phone is a great camera, especially if you have an iPhone. I, I don't. Um, very affordable, low cost flatbed scanners. There's some great services like a Legacy Box, uh, which I've used to scan movies and, be, and photos. Um, a lot of people have slides, and those are, they have great services for that. Um, and it's a great way to collaborate with local community organizations and volunteers, especially historical societies where they do have a wealth of uh, images. Um, insofar as getting started on Flickr, it's super easy right now. Um, all you need is a Yahoo account. Um, that's literally all you need. Um, you can sign up for Flickr when you have that. You're using your Yahoo account to log in. You don't need a pro account. Right now the base is actually one terabyte of storage, which is more than anyone probably will ever use unless you like taking pictures of squirrels like I do. Um, this may change, and, and I say it actually definitely will change just because of the environment. Nothing is, nothing is certain, um, even with the vendors that we deal with um, in the library community. And so there's a link to my Flickr page, and I can show you that uh, in a little bit. So here are the seven F's, and these are the key benefits. Um, flexibility, findability, figures, uh, functionality, friends, forever, and free. Um, that's my, my old dog. We had to uh, put him down earlier, but he actually um, was a, a, just a sweetheart. And because of tagging, 
He has shown up in Snopes. He's even shown up on news alerts. Um, he's been all over, um, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. So I want to go through the functions right now. Um, I want to go through these uh, seven aspects and benefits and functionality. Um, first thing, it's really easy to load images and videos. It's, it's just a, a colossally easy thing to do. Um, you don't need to know that much like you could with a content DM system, which is far more sophisticated. But for some of us, it's actually overkill. It's more than we need. Um, items are arranged as they're loaded. So think about, um, if you will, a library where everything just sort of comes in at the end of the shelf and everything is organized not so much by when it was, by what intellectually, it, where it belongs intellectually, but when it, was, when it arrived. Um, there are a lot of ways to round that. Uh, people find them by tags, descriptive terms, titles, albums, and groups. Um, images can be public or private. So if someone says, hey, I don't want a picture, or, I don't want this picture on the web, you can make it private, um, which, which helps. There is an internal image ed editor, Aviary, which is really useful. When it's working, it's since been, um, it's going to be upgraded. And so right now it's not working. I'm going to try to flip and I'm going to ask Krista to um, help. And see, so you should be looking at my Flickr. Um, yep, pictures. yep, we see that. Lots yep, of we see that now with all the squirrels. Yeah. Um, talk about aviary though. That is also a separate product that you can just use. I mean, you said it's within, it's built into Flickr, but it's also because I've used it before, separate from Flickr. Right, but you know, if it's the it's nice, nice thing about it's all in one place, yeah. In Flickr is that you don't have to actually download it, edit it, and then upload it again. Right, So you're right, doing it yeah. sort of live on the web. Um, so here's a picture I took yesterday of one of my squirrel right. friends, or two <laughs> days ago. Um, and what did I do yesterday? I guess I didn't get those Taken on April 10th, it says. Yeah, I guess I didn't take any yesterday. Uh, or no, here mine yesterday, I just scrolled down. Um, so. This is the guy I took yesterday, um, and you know here here's the image. Um, I've got my description right here. It's in groups. Um, it has all of these albums that it's in, and it has tags. So if I want to look at pictures that I took in April over UM Squirrel, so I can look and okay, I'm gonna just move this so. So right now you can see that I've taken 2,400 pictures over the years of squirrels in April. So is there just like one squirrel or is there like a horde of them? <laughs> There's a lot. If it was one, that would be weirder than it actually is right now. Um, a lot of squirrel pictures, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it just, uh, they're very common on campus. Hmm. Um, and they're here, they are in their cavity nest. Um, but the thing to remember about the way that you organize is like with any database, the where the items sit is really immaterial as to how people are gonna use it. They're gonna use it by finding things. They're gonna use it by doing keyword searches. Um, so I wanted just to show you um, how, how this is actually managed. And if I open this, um, you know, pull this over here. Um, it's very, very easy. Here's the actual edit button. You can see down here, and there's edit and aviary, and here's the, the, uh, the update. Um, the goal would be that I could update, maybe crop that online, and so I wouldn't have to download it. Um, if I do want to download it, I can download it in just about any size. So um, I always load mine in original. One of the things, and actually I'll just show this now, um, if I, I can easily share in, in Facebook, uh, Twitter, and so if I do Encompass, no, it's Encomp Live, right? I think so. Uh, yes, that's the hashtag I created. I made up for us, yep, abbreviating it a little bit. So if I send that out now, it's, it's part of the thread. So cute little guy in a, in, a, in a cavity nest. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, that's sort of what I wanted to show you insofar as 
actually looking at functionality. Um, for uh, more information, uh, your profile, the functionality, your profile, you can actually have a lot of good stuff to add information about your library. Um, and so this is an older stamp of, of my uh, profile. And you can see actually I've got um, some pictures of me through the years. Um, and you can manage your information, privacy, uh, all, all of this information. And even though it's a personal account, it can be for you, an individual, an institution, what have you. And here are some favorites of other Flickr members that I have. Okay. Um, functionality also is about uploading. Um, it's super easy to upload. Here is just some that I, I did um, recently. Basically, you can pull them up, um, import them from your desktop, and you can change the titles all to the same thing and to different things. You can add descriptions, add tags, um, add, al add to albums and groups. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, this works really well for loads that are about 300 photos or less. More than 300 photos, it's a good idea to break things up. Occasionally, items loaded in here. Um, there's a break in the net, internet or so, and or the connection, and you just don't get all the content, and it makes it hard to find. Okay. And you can also make changes down the road. Um, another so after functionality, flexibility is really important. Um, we can use albums and collections to pull like things together. And this is really important when you think about library, you could have collections, events, programs, community endeavors, all sorts of things. Um, this allows you to pull together and segregate items from others. And it also makes it easier to share, um, creates nice ways uh, to share members, especially if you're going through other organizations this is actually what my um, albums look like a year. And think of an album as a folder um, or uh, just a, sort of a sub collection of your photos. Um, we have ocean going cargo ships, uh, lighthouses at Chesapeake Bay in Maryland, light ships at Benefit Show. Um, I, I, my sister in law has a, a dance studio, so I take pictures at, at those events. Um, here's the book move out. And a variety of stores. I mean, basically anything is available. And what I'm going to do is just bounce back. So get rid of the squirrels. And we'll look at my albums right now. And you can see that actually here are two events that took place at the Raw School. This is Detroit Youth Fair Marketing uh, Maker Fair. This is the Sanger Leadership Crisis, which took place. Um, at uh, the uh, University of Michigan. A while ago, here's my nephew looking really dorky. Um, squirrels in New York City. It's the cutest use ever of a mailbox. Those are two squirrels who are living in a mailbox that are in um, uh, Washington Square. There's a lot of good things here, <laughs> Washington uh, County cemeteries. Um, there's just a whole lot here. And then if I click on this, what I can do is I can also share um, this. Actually, let me go back and share squirrels of New York City. And again, I can do the same thing, put in a hashtag and comp live, get the P. And now it's part of that thread. Um, and it just makes it an easier way to share these. Um, there isn't any limit in the number of uh, of these uh, albums that you have in a standard account. Um, so this is something that's really very, very useful. Okay, I'm going to go back. One of the things that you can also do is actually pull together a lot of different collections. So I showed you a couple different events that were at the Raw School of Business. Um, so I'm very, very fond of museums, independent of my name, or uh, lighthouses. Um, and maritime history, and it's just quite by accident. Um, and uh, we can bring together all sorts of things. So here are all the different um, groups that I have, collections of photos of lighthouses all over the country. Um, so there's some interesting things that, that we can actually look at here. 
Um, findability is really great. Um, tags are the best way to have people find your image. Now, when we think about findability in libraries, we think of Mark, we think of Dublin Core, we think of descriptive terms and very controlled and precise uh, ways that we catalog something. Um, in Flickr and a lot of tag-based environments, it's kind of a hot mess, uh, but, but it actually works really well. There's no real limit on the number of tags. You've seen Instagram pictures, hashtag mad, hashtag angry, hashtag blonde, hashtag um, old, hashtag etc. You can keep going with that, but there's no limit. You can really do everything you want. Um, and this is actually where things are found. And this has been just remarkable, for me at least, to experience this. And as a librarian, thinking about how this works, is just really fantastic. Um, so they can have internal or external meanings. So um, they all live together in the same place. Um, sometimes things don't index right and you have to re-index them and it takes about 24 hours. Um, and that's a hint. You can make the image private then public again and it re-indexes it. Um, images with no tags or only internal use tags will be virtually hidden. So if we look here, um, this is a picture I took last year, Squirrel at U of M, on March 30th, 1st, 2016. Um, you can search for any of the terms in the description, but the tags are really what are more important. And you can see that there's public tags, squirrels, Ann Arbor, Michigan, animals, campus, University of Michigan. And then there's this one that says UM squirrels 03312016. No one is going to search for that. But if I wanted to find the pictures that I took that day, that's what I use. Um, and I'll use underscores instead of space occasionally to um, make it more useful for me. Uh, but occasionally you'll set these up to make them work for you. So if you're, if you're editing a collection, um, that becomes very, very, very useful then to be able to um, identify each of the items. Again, using these uh, local or internally uh, tags let you find them. Um, findability uh, groups are another great way. Um, there's a Michigan Libraries group, there's a Nebraska Libraries group, there's groups on nearly any topic and anyone can create a group. Um, so here are some on squirrels. Um, as you might imagine I'm interested in that. Um, and if I go, no, I'll go back in a bit. Um, you can collaborate with community members and organizations like historical societies. Um, it's a great way to share your pictures, but to see the other pictures that people have. So instead of thinking about the library as a sort of the, the, the center of, of local history, for example, it becomes one element in a, in a, in a community. Okay, so the friends let you do that. And in fact, if I go here, I'm going to swing back here. I'm going to go to my so I'm just going to pull this over. I'm going to go to my profile. So here are the pictures of me. Um, here are the people that I'm following. So these are my Flickr friends. I just recently have Council Bluffs Library in Tulsa um, and Oak, Omaha. Um, and here are the groups that I'm involved. I'm, I'm associated with 658, all sorts of things, every one of my uh, um, interests. And again, if I click here, this is the Nebraska Library Commission's um, uh, group. Uh, this is not their group. This is their Flickr feed, mm -hmm. and I can yep, look at. That's ours. Yep. And I can look at their profile, and actually, it could show me what groups that they're in. So, are they in any groups that I want to join? Um, mm -hmm. uh, library bags. Ah, uh, yes, that's something that was very popular. <laughs> All those different tote bags that people that are given out at conferences. That, that that is that is awesome and and something I, for anyone who's married to a librarian, there's the <laughs> inevitable question: Why did you bring home more bags? 
Uh, but some conferences you don't have a choice. Um, so if I'm going to join this group, um, it's it, it's that simple. And now, um, in order to add something, I'm going to add something really quickly to this because I think it'd be really appropriate. And you can see just how easy this is. Um, IUG. So uh, I am hoping, actually, I can find it. I did not intend to do this. Um, oh, oh, this is this is it. Is that a mountain of bags, or? Yes. That was a. Um, oh wow. I was at, um, that's me, uh, in 2008 when we were doing a bag stuff thing for those mm -hmm. conferences. So while you might complain about having some of those bags at home, there it is. Yes. So I how did I find that so fast? I remembered it, yes. <laughs> but it's bags and badge stuffing, IUG, and I was able to find that. So that's where findability comes to play. Now, you don't get asked that often for this kind of picture, but it's possible that 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 may happen so um it's nice to be able to use this in real time and show you some of the things that are happening um and so so now maybe through the back group i may have more people that i'm following and so this basically shows you um uh in your context your favorite photos from other members i love planes especially um, the uh, A380s, the double-decker uh, jumbo jets. Um, and uh, here are some of the um, libraries that I'm, I'm working with. Um, your contacts, recent photos, photos show on your homepage. It, it looks a little different now. Um, and so that, that is always constantly changing. Um, you do get emails daily showcasing the context new items and this is great for community building so if you sit there and you actually have 20 people in the community who you're following or other libraries you can see maybe other events other um, contributions that are being made um, there's some you know just fascinating things that are out there um, it's super easy to connect and I showed you how to connect with Facebook Tumblr Pinterest and Twitter um, you can also very easily send embedded text to add into websites. So um, it makes it easy. You don't have to download and upload. You can actually use this uh, from the web. And the next time we look at a picture, um, I'll show you how to do that. OK, forever. This is an important one of the dynamics. And libraries are about forever. Libraries are about retention. Um, so Flickr is a company, and it's part of Yahoo. And it's not completely secure because no company is completely secure. Um, so what I do is I create an offsite archive. So um, right now there isn't a way to actually dump everything from Yahoo. So it's always good to have it available to you that down the road you decide you want something else or you're moving and you, you just want a different um, means. This way you don't have to rely on the company to download. Um, since you rename the pictures as you load them, I use folders to help keep things together. It's a little bit of work, but it has long-term benefits. And not what I haven't had to use it yet. What you can see here is actually what I did uh, from last February. So every day, I take pictures every day because I'm weird um, and compulsive. And what I've done is I've actually, in each of these folders, I have them labeled. And so it's UM squirrel or squirrel and the date. Um, 0201 2016 and they're broken down by what I did that February and then it's in a folder that's called February done and then it's in a it's in a um, external hard drive that I keep at home that way if Flickr let's say Flickr was sold and they decided they are taking it down highly unlikely but it's plausible this way I'm not without my photos um, uh, there isn't great description here there's just the raw data uh, but there is the ability to find them again. And this is a good tip for any service that you're using for hosting your digital collection, um, content DM or anything. You're going to want to have a backup because you just don't know. Yep. Yeah. 
I mean, they're, 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 it's, you know, probable and plausible, and, and, and this is probably neither, but, you know, weirder things have happened. Um, there have been a lot of stories in, in the digital environment where, you know, you use a resource, um, and all of a sudden it's gone one day. It's like a restaurant in your town. Um, all of a sudden one day, it's gone. Mm -hmm. um, another F, figures and statistics. This to me is really great. If they provide really great statistics, um, including page views, image views, items marked as favorites, comments from other users. Um, this actually shows you a graph uh, from March 31st. You can see the last about month in recent views. And you can see here it spikes around the 17th. Um, what typically happens, so I'll shoot photographs of a dance recital, and that will typically be what I share out, and that gets very popular. Um, and so that's why I have the spikes up into the 50,000 views. Um, uh, it resets at 8 o'clock, um, I believe, um, what would that be, 7 o'clock your time. Um, and um, and that's that, and you can see yes. how many people have viewed your photos, photo stream, albums, collections, in galleries. I have no galleries, that's why it's a sad zero. And and as of last year, I had, um, I have uh, six point uh, six six terabyte of unlimited used, um, and so it's a lot of photos, and uh, it's. So, you know, you think about it, unless you're planning to have 200,000, you're probably going to be okay with their standard um, contract uh, or the standard uh, account. Um, you can see basically on a daily basis what's been viewed and then on a sort of an all-time view. And mostly these are some of my more popular uh, dance pictures and my more popular squirrel pictures. So go figure. Um, that, that's basically what shows up here. Um, you get regular emails about your recent activity. They've added as a favorite. They've made a comment. It's nice to see. Okay, so what's going on? What are what are people doing? And it's really nice to be able to to have that kind of engagement uh, with a larger group of people. And the last um, F benefit is that it's free. Um, you know, U of M. We have a we have a very good budget. It's not enough, but um, we get to use resources like this for free, and I don't have to pay for maintenance. I don't have to pay for anything. Um, a library-focused digital image systems can be expensive and are not easy to find or use. Um, they're more sophisticated, certainly, than this, but uh, they may also be more than what you might need. Um, pro accounts, which I think are still available. Are very modest and the cost is 25 a year. Their standard account, I still think, is very good. Um, yeah, they do have the. I have the pro account for my personal one. Yeah. Mm. Um, I've had the uh, Krista. I've had the pro like, account forever. Yeah, I just keep renewing it automatically every yeah. year. Um, but yeah, they did change that the free now has the that one terabyte of of storage was the big, you know, thing for that. Yeah. And and you know they can be very generous um, because. Most people aren't going to have that much content, but still, mm -hmm. it's uh, it, it should cover almost everyone. Um, your images, your rights. I upload everything with Creative Commons licenses. I think these are really fantastic. Uh, basically, it allows people to use it for editorial purposes for free. It, you know, it makes them available. Um, if they want to use it for commercial purposes, they need to contact me. And I've had a couple people do that, and it's it's, it's very satisfying. Um, and so you can put restrictions on access and downloading if you want. Um, but if it's findable, then people are going to use it. So actually, so here's a couple uses. Um, for a long time, this Fox channel, every time they ran a story in their website about O'Hare, they used this picture which I took one year flying out to California. I was flying on United through Chicago. I was not removed from the plane, so I, I, that was a good day. I didn't realize how good a day it was until now. Um, but this is a picture that they use. They're using in the editorial context. Um, here's a picture of some peonies. We have beautiful peony gardens in May and June. 
um, in Ann Arbor, and it was used for the cover of Michigan History. Um, here are some from uh, Michigan Public Radio uh, about energy insulation and uh, the Detroit River uh, Lighthouse. So again, if they can find it, they can use it. And that's what's really important. Um, I want to jump back and show you a couple things, but here's uh, the information. And because it's a library presentation and I've been devoid of cats, I thought I would actually add some. Those aren't mine. Those are from a cat rescue that I work with. I volunteer and I use that um, Flickr also to share those pictures out. Um, there's a couple more things I wanted to show you before. Um, we leave. One of the things that, um, so I already looked at that. So this is actually from the Omaha Public Library. Um, I was really kind of excited to see this. Uh, this came up just this morning. I think these were posted just a couple days ago. Um, they have a great, great site. Here are some events that they have. Uh, this was their Easter egg hunt, the Best Johnson Elkhorn Branch. And you can just see some really fantastic things, including a giant bunny. So, you know, you can't have an Easter egg hunt without a giant bunny. I think the sister is probably a little less sure of it than her brother. Um, but you can, there's some really neat things. And uh, I'm sure that also that people will appreciate being able to see this. Um, anytime I'm dealing with pictures of, of students, I try to identify the event, but nothing else. Um, and I think that's that's appropriate. Um, we've have done some really neat community events in Celine, um, but you can see quite a lot here. Um, one thing I was going to show you, and I think I can do this. If we have enough time. If I go to here, oh, actually, I'm going to go. So I'm going to go to my profile page, and then I'm going to go to, um, actually, I can do it up here, Bluefield Public Library. There it is. OK, so this is actually what I want to show you. They do really cool things with, with documents, um, and they've been doing this for quite some time. Um, and so here's uh, Joseph Busen. This is a, it must be a, I don't know, a veteran collection, a serviceman from Bloomfield. And this is a Florence Roberts Memorial file. And so one of the things, it's there in the header, there's no tags that are made. But if I search for this name, I'm very likely to find this. Even though it was updated only on March 30th, um, it's very, very fast to update. And these are the kinds of resources that someone is going to stumble on and just they're going to flip their lid because maybe they this is bloomfield new jersey and maybe they live there at some point and um it would not be something that people would really expect to find um and it really be fantastic and if this is something that you really wanted one of the other things i want to show you if we go back to this um arrow which shows as share what I can do is embed, and what this does, I'm going to copy this, then open this. I think you should still be able to see this. Make this bigger. So this is actually HTML text that can be put in any web page, and it will show the image. Um, and when you're doing this, don't save, I can change it to be a square, a thumbnail, a larger square, original, and large. But there's some really wonderful things here. And you can see there's not a ton of metadata. Um, and you can add to these things as you want. You know, the 313th Fighter Squadron, you can add these as tags as you want and as you have the ability to do so. Um, but I really personally think that this is one of the neat um, collections. If I go to albums, I think they have things broken down. Um, so here's that. Here's that um, element. They have census. All their census um, information. Look at that. Yeah, that's awesome. So they have. Yeah, I think they're just pages of the census documents. <laughs> 
So if you had, then if I click on that, I can look a little closer. And if you're 52 or three like I am, you need to make it really large. So that's <laughs> nice. Um, it's really fantastic what they've done. And then go back to the album list. And the thing is, one of the things that I love about it is that you can build this organically. Yeah, you you know when you have a digital collection, you like to have a lot of things there at first. However, sometimes that's not always possible. So you can start things very very uh, um, sort of piecemeal or small. Um, you can actually I'm going to look at this. Oh, I need to be able to rotate just down here. Thumbnail. Oh no, maybe I can't rotate it. Can I do that? Well, it's on its side. I don't think I can rotate it, but that's a bookmobile. Mm -hmm. Old school. I love when the little kids wore ties. <laughs> um, so there's there's a fantastic amount of resources here, and every library has got these amazing tools, um, these collections. And we think about people who are in Nebraska, Michigan, New Jersey, Illinois who, you know, whose family had been there forever, and all of a sudden they end up picking up and moving somewhere else. Um, as they go back and they do their research, to be able to search for something and to, to find something uh, along these lines is really fantastic. Um, these are all indexed in Google, um, and one of the things that I do, the last thing I'm going to do, uh, So I'm doing a search here in Google, and if I do settings, um, tools, last month. So these are things that um, that that are on Google that I put out there. I didn't send it to Google. Um, this is from March 22nd, and um, I was able to find it because they use the photo credit, and this is about trade issues. Um, it's a China shipping line container at the Port of LA. Um, this makes it real easy to find out who's using your stuff, if anyone is. Um, but it shows you just ba basically how quickly this material uh, gets out there in in the in the market. And in fact, if I get rid of this squirrel and I change the tool to less 24 hours. Get rid of that. Mm, maybe I need to do past week. There are going to be some things that are showing up very quickly. Um, here's a gallery on flickers of silly squirrels, and somewhere in there, there's one of mine. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Hey, it's good to be known for something, I guess. Hey. Um, now, yeah, this is great. There's a lot of people that are finding things like I know getting notifications sometimes or getting, like you said, being asked that random pictures that you didn't even think were anything like special. I wasn't, you know, you're not going out to take some professional stock photo. You're just taking a, a picture of a squirrel. But somebody wanted a picture of a squirrel for some reason, and yours was the one that caught their attention. Well, and part of it is actually being caught. Um, a, a lot of great photos are out there that are just not tagged and so are yeah. impossible to find. Think about a book on your shelf um, or an article in your databases that's been misattributed or maybe it doesn't have the right date or maybe it's suppressed. It's invisible. So every tag we add to any of these images um, makes them very visible. And um, I think that's really what when we think about libraries, we think about Harry Potter's of the world and uh, Percy Jackson and um, you know Daniel Steele and, and a lot of the, the big names that come through. We think of reference works, but we also think of these local collections that really are unique and spectacular. And if there's a way that we can use resources like this to share it out, um, digital image, um, digital projects have a great way of being very intimidating and mm -hmm. so to be yes. able to do something like this a, a, on a smaller scale um, and maybe bringing in volunteers and bringing in members of the community um, is a great engagement point 
for almost any library. Mm -hmm. I, I think a lot of people, especially the smaller libraries like we have here in Nebraska, are maybe intimidated by that software like ContentDM or something like you said. It's just yeah. more than what they need. They just they have this great historical collection. They've got this vertical file of pictures or newspaper clippings or whatever, and they want to get it out there more. This is a nice, quick, and easy way to do it. But yeah, definitely get those <laughs> tags in there. Put the if you don't tag it with something it's not findable as right. easily. I mean, you could link to it from your library's web page and say, look, here we do have a collection, and here's where it all is, and that's great, but add the tags too when you're doing it. Well, the, what the tags do is they, they open it up so that you no longer have to, so if, if I knew my family was from Bloomfield, New Jersey, I can say, well, I'm going to go there and look at what their collections are, but maybe I know they're just from New Jersey, um, which we are, but um, that's neither here nor there. And so you sit there and you think about how can we direct people. Um, it's one thing to, to direct someone when they know where they want to go. It's another thing if they don't know where they want to go. And that's the beauty of Google. That's what it does when it can really pull all these things together and help you find things that you wouldn't otherwise know existed. Yeah, um, serendipity, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think thinking about what the, the resources that are undocumented or that that are not digitally available in the libraries all across the country and would just you know blow people away and I think it would be you know I, I I would love to see more people participate and I think that the barrier for entry is way lower than it's ever been mm -hmm. and so Absolutely. that's pretty much um the one thing, we're still on the slides, so here's my contact information. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Um, we do the, have a few uh, comments and questions, but I'll go ahead with this first, yeah. Um, there are uh, the, the libraries uh, in the back end of the presentation slides, and I'll go through this, are lots of libraries that have these collections. Um, Focus on Michigan, I added Nebraska. Um, some other ones. The uh, actually, let me go back. The Lester Two Rivers, Wisconsin, it, it just has a beautiful um, flicker feed. They do a great job. Uh, Here's some larger libraries: U of M, Michigan State Library of Congress, um, and then here's some additional readings and resources. And these are some of these are freely available. Others are in academic journals, and 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 I've got copies. So if anyone wants one of these. Um, I can definitely uh, send it your way, uh, but there's just a tremendous amount of, of resources that are available here, and I think that when a, a library wants to do something along these lines, to be able to move in this direction without actually, you know, sitting there first thing, you know, oh my God, how are we going to pay for the software, and then how are we going to do the project, you can move much more slowly as, you know, as you dip your toe in the water. Mm -hmm. And just so everyone knows that, that, that he was going through those slides pretty quickly with all those links, don't worry about it. We're going to have um, a link to these presentations. This presentation will be included when the recording is made available later as well. Um, so, and that's what's on that uh, the tiny URL he got. He has there as well. Yeah. So, um, no need to try and scribble down all of those libraries or their URLs or anything. They'll all be available right there afterwards as well. So if you do have any questions, uh, type them into the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface and I will uh, pass them on. We have a couple of things here already as you were talking. Um, one, just a comment related to squirrels. Uh, someone here is a, a parent is from well, <laughs> from Western Kentucky University and she says they have actually albino squirrels there. Population well, I, albino. Um, I have uh, seen them. We've actually seen, I haven't seen so there, there are parts of the country where they're more common. Um, we actually had, um, let me see if I can find it. Um, we actually had in um, Ann Arbor, uh, I saw not that long ago, uh, one with a white tail. Oh, just the tail and, though. Yeah, yeah and it was, um, let's see if I can find that. Here in Lincoln, Nebraska, where I am, we have in certain areas of town black squirrels, actually, all black fur. 
I, I've which, seen. And they're only in certain areas, not in the whole city. So, like where my house happens to be, it's not. But like six, eight blocks away, that's I drive by them there. <laughs> they're very specific where they want to live. I guess. Oh wow, look at that. So you can see actually that <laughs> these are fox squirrels, and you can see that for whatever reason, and the, the beginning part of his tail seems to have um, the regular coloring, but everything else is is white and um, so again we tag so I can you know part of it is actually knowing what to look for but yeah um, one of my colleagues here at the library says oh my god I saw a white-tailed squirrel I'm like I, I have no response but it, he was there <laughs> for a, a, a little while and uh, then we never saw him again so I don't know what exactly happened all right. All right. We have a question about Flickr, though, yes. <laughs> um, rather than squirrels. Um, earlier, uh, you were talking about updates that come from it, wanted, and they want to know if you can change from daily updates to a weekly digest or something. From when it, is, if there's any way to control that. Um, insofar as the emails that come. I'm not sure. Yeah, Donna, what were you talking about? The email updates? Yes. Yeah, the emails. Is there any um, way of modifying that, or is it always just a daily, or when something comes up? Email and notifications. Uh, so we're looking at the email notifications. So we can send copies of group invitations, etc. Um, you can control what invitations you get. Mm -hmm. um, a uh, summary of recent activities, and you you get a daily digest. Let me see if I change this. It is a daily digest, not, but not. It's, yeah, um, or you can actually have it as soon as it happens. Oh, and here's one. Yes, but oh, only yeah, once a week. Thanks. Yep, you can. Yep. So you can choose it to be individual, which could depending on how active yours is, can be crazy, yeah. or um, once a day or once a week. So yeah, all right. So if things get overwhelming, yeah, you might want to bump it down to something less often than every time. <laughs> she says six, that's what I was hoping. <laughs> <laughs> you can also tell only about new content from friends and family. So those are the people who are the ones that you're connected with. Um, right, and that's something you can do. I've seen um, you can indicate, you can categorize everybody you are friends with or connected to as whether they're friends, family, or neither. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it's, well, there's, it's just some library I'm following, and I want yeah. <laughs> and then down here you can see uploads by email options. So I can send an email. I've never done this. Um, I can send because I always tweak with the descriptions. So I can send an email with an attachment, and I believe it'll just load it to Flickr. But I'm, mm, I'm not really. I've not sure. used that myself either. I just use either the app or the website or something. Yeah. So, and there's a lot of things here about who can see your profile, um, hide your profile from public searches, I haven't no. Um, hide your stuff from public searches, no. Some people do. Um, you can hide your EX, IF data, which is um, how fast the shot was, um, F stops, etc. Oh, yeah. Your camera information. I love seeing it. I think it's really helpful. Uh, when I look at great photos from other people, I want to see that. So. Yes, yeah, so there's a lot of settings you want to might want to look into um, that you may have different depending on if you have your own personal account for your things, and then maybe a separate account for your library. There may yeah. be different things you would allow on each in each of those. So you definitely want to go and look at all of these privacies and the permissions and that you're allowing. All right. It doesn't look like any other questions have come in. Um, if anybody has any last minute different, oh wait, of course something comes in right as I say that. <laughs> um, uh, okay. Uh, searching tips. For example, if you want to search for Nebraska but not the military ship, so not the you know the Nebraska. Is there a way of doing Nebraska, or yeah, so. like minus yeah boat or ship or something? Is there any ways to do that? I can do that in how, Google. How it, Right, yeah. I don't know, I don't know if, if Flickr has that kind of advanced. I don't think I have much of anything. So if oh, actually, oh my God, I never dawned on me. So my niece rides a horse. Her horse's name is Nebraska. Um, <laughs> so this is actually this is where you need some good disambiguation. You can see mm -hmm. actually on the screen. Um, you should be able to, I think you're seeing this. Mm -hmm. Yep, we're seeing your Flickr now. Okay. Yeah. So there's my niece and her horse. Um, and here's Nebraska. 
So I've taken 1,198 photos of Nebraska, none of which mm -hmm. are actually Nebraska, as you guys know it. Um, <laughs> it's this horse. Um, so you get when you do a search, you get uh, your photos, people you follow, and then everyone's photos. So um, you can actually limit this by what is relevant, the date they were uploaded, the date they were taken, or interesting. And by limiting it to interesting, oh, here's, okay. So the, by limiting it to interesting, um, you actually get uh, the ones that are more popular. Mm -hmm. Now, why am I seeing F-14s? Um, they were before the, the uh, planes that fly over the game. Yep. Yeah. They, they fly over my house in the, when they do their <laughs> practice runs. And so um, they're probably listed that way. And there's Nebraska, the horse with his distinct colorings. Um, if I go to advance mm -hmm. here, I can limit it to, instead of all text, I can just do the tags. And now I've got, I, I only have Nebraska as the horse's name. And so that makes it a little easier. Um, I can limit it to photos, videos. I can do a date range. I can do a minimum size. But what I don't know, and maybe I can play with this, is to see um, Nebraska not ship. I don't know if that would actually work. I've got nothing there. So if I go to, if I go back, uh, oops. Hmm. Nebraska not ship. I don't know if that is actually going to yeah, and there's no way to really tell unless you, like it doesn't even show you here's what your search was to see, oh, wait, we didn't get the ship in there. and Yeah. Well, there might have been 3,000 because now the view all is less if I leave uh, it out. Okay. Mm -hmm. If I said, uh, Nebraska, uh, try this, not horse. Yeah, that did it. Yeah. Look, because I went from 1,100 yeah. to 15. So I learned something new today. Oh, cool. yeah. Oh, and she gave actually, oh, I wasn't looking at the questions. Her suggestion was trying squirrel, not U-M. <laughs> but um, Nebraska not horse works as well. <laughs> and if I look at interesting, so this is at Vanderbilt. This is at UCLA. I need a better hobby. I know, um, but when you get to go to Tennessee and you get to see a squirrel eating fried chicken, it's pretty cool. You're going to want to take a picture of that, yes. That's why you always have your camera around. Awesome. All right, she says, great, thank you. That's exactly what you want to know, so that'll be definitely helpful for looking for whatever topics you might think might have good photos and Flickr for your use, yeah. All right, so it's a little after 11, 11.02 a.m. Central Time here. Um, anybody have any last-minute desperate questions that you want to ask? Get them typed in right now. Um, someone did say, awesome webinar. We've been wanting to do this. Um, thank you so much. I feel much more confident. That's from one of our librarians here in Nebraska. So, Cool. Great. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those situations where librarians, I love librarians. I've been a librarian forever, um, and I know I'm guilty of this. Um, overcomplicating a problem and and then stepping back and going ah we can't do it this is something you can actually move I think very very easily um, and there's so many people I, yeah. I bought a new printer um, and had a scanner embedded in it and it was less than a hundred dollars so they do now they're so cheap and and with everything uh, scanner fax um, copier all built in yeah so all right, nobody's typing in things. I think we'll wrap it up for this morning. Excellent. Uh, well, thank yeah, you thank so you, much, Krista. Yeah, thanks, Corey. This is great. Um, it's definitely making me. I've been kind of um, slacking in my own personal Flickr use. Um, it's, I've just been lazy uh, for years. I always I have um, albums of different events and things and conferences I went to. Um, I actually have taken less pictures just in general, but um, I need to get back into putting in things, more things in there, and getting it more more organized. No, it's so, yeah. it, it's fantastic. I've taken 
Um, I've taken pictures every day um, just as a habit. Some of them are kind of stupid, and others are kind of fun. So you never know what you're going to see. Yeah, it's documenting what you're doing, absolutely. Yeah. All right, so thank you very much, Corey. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Um, I am going to I find the right tab here. Pull back presenter control to my screen. There we go. Show my screen on the right. This out of the way. All right. All right. So that does wrap it up for today's show, um, which was the Building a Digital Image Collection with Flickr. The show has been, is being recorded, and will be available on our website over here. Um, if you want to, Corey, you could shut down your webcam if you don't want to share it anymore from your side. Okay. I will. Or stop. Yeah. Ah, I don't know how to do it. Um, there you go. Good job. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it will be here on our website. This is our Encompass Live website where we have our upcoming shows. But right underneath them is a link to our archives. And this is where it will be posted. I'll upload it to YouTube um, right after we finish up here. It will be posted here. I will have a link to Corey's presentation, which <clears throat> this is the link that he put up. The, the tiny URL goes right here where he has his um, presentation available. And any um, specific URLs and things we put into our delicious account which I started up here I added Flickr and then afterwards I'll go back and add in um, direct links to some of the other sites he mentioned um, probably not to every single one of those libraries they mentioned because they're yeah. available in the presentation but just a few things will be added in there and they'll be put here on our website when that is done and available I will email all of you to let you know that it's ready to watch and share with anyone you want to um, so I hope that's for today's show. Um, I hope you join us next week when our topic is LMNOP, which is the alphabet, uh, the evolution of engagement. This is a presentation by our Lincoln City Libraries right here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Uh, Jodine, Vicki, and Leanne are going to be with us. Um, they started with a Library Moms Night Out program, but it became even bigger and more interest in, of interest to people, so they modified it to a Library Makers Night Out program. Um, so it's become gone beyond that, and they've got a lot of good ideas for makerspace um, and things that um, not necessarily a techie type maker type thing, makerspace, um, but more more other things. I saw this. This is a presentation that they did at our um, Nebraska Library Association and School Librarians Association annual conference last fall um, that I attended, and it was really cool and interesting. Really fun program they have. So I hope you'll sign up for that show and any of our other future ones we have coming up. I've got the other May dates I'm working on filling in as well. So always keep checking back, and you'll see new new sessions coming up. Also, Encompass Live is on Facebook. Um, there's a link here, and in all each of our sessions, and I've got the page over here. So if you are a big Facebook user, um, pop over there and give us a like. I post reminders about shows. Here I did a reminder this morning about um, that people could log in on the fly to today's Flickr presentation. Um, when our recordings are available, I post it here. Here's the one from last time. So um, if you are big on um, Facebook, please do uh, give us a like and see um, what and keep up to date on what we're doing there. Other than that, that wraps it up for this morning. Thank you very much, Corey. Thank you, everyone, for attending, and we will see you next time on Encompass Live. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Find where my – there we go, my recording button. <laughs> <laughs>